Some say that driverless cars are the future, and San Francisco has been at the forefront of what could one day be a whole new autonomous world. Not everyone likes that. A lot of people have been fed up with robo taxis on city streets for a whole lot of reasons. But not everybody is taking that frustration as far as this one group of protesters. Itai Hod is gracious to spend some time here with us in the studio tonight at this very late hour to talk about this. And I guess the way that you could describe this is like a very unorthodox form of protest. Yeah, think man versus machine, right? And how do you stop a fleet of robo taxis in their tracks? Well, with something you find on a lot of city streets. They come out after dark, riding their bikes in packs and wearing masks to conceal their identities. We just kind of ride around in their main travel routes and we wait for them. Called Safe Street Rebel, they've been roaming the streets of San Francisco hunting for a specific kind of car, robo-taxis. Their goal is to disable them using orange cones as their weapon of choice. We see a lot of problems with these. John, who asked us not to use his real name, is the group's unofficial spokesperson. We're in a climate emergency and transportation is the number one source of emissions. For the last two weeks, this band of anti-car activists has become a thorn in the side of big tech companies like Waymo and Cruise. Once these cars are disabled, they're stuck until a technician arrives to reset them. What are you hoping to achieve? We're hoping to really change the conversation on these. We want more people to just consider whether we want these on our roads, and really we want regulators to listen. They believe these cars are not only unsafe, but are taking away much needed resources from more efficient public transportation. Here's why San Francisco is protesting the expansion of robo-taxis. Their protest has gone viral garnering millions of views online, just as transportation officials are considering whether to expand driverless services in San Francisco. In a statement, Waymo called the group's actions vandalism. Crews told us their cars are providing free rides to late night workers, as well as meals to food insecure San Franciscans. Safe Street Rebel says it only disables empty cars to make sure no one is harmed or inconvenienced. <laughs> Cruise says this really hasn't impacted them all that much. How many cruise cars do you reckon you've stopped? Uh, I think personally I've done in the high dozens. And I invite people to look at Cruise's statements where they say that we're disrupting food delivery and that this isn't affecting their fleet. It's one or the other, um, and it, they can't both be true. Do you think they're bluffing? Yes. Billy Riggs is a professor of transportation and innovation at the University of San Francisco and an advisor to tech startups. He says not only are these cars fully electric and therefore better for the environment, they're safer. With millions of miles driven on public roads, they've had zero fatalities. We've reached a level where AI can actually do many of the functions in our lives better than we can with less margin for error. Even so, city officials have raised concerns about whether these cars are ready for prime time. Both Waymo and Cruise Robo Taxis have made headlines after getting stuck in the middle of busy intersections. Get it out of here now! In some cases, they've blocked first responders from doing their jobs. The San Francisco Fire Department says it logged more than 60 incidents involving these cars since May of 2022. Say Street Rebel says it wants more accountability. I think broadly, San Franciscans are just tired of being tech skinny pigs. Promoting public transport by targeting autos on autopilot. You know, Itai, so when I watch this piece, great work, by the way. Thank you. The first thing that I think about, the first question that I have, is this somehow either against the law or breaking some kind of rule? Like, is this allowed? Isn't that the $64,000 question, <laughs> right? Yeah, so, you know, it depends on who you ask. Waymo calls it vandalism. We asked Safe Street Rebel what they thought about that. They said, we're not causing any damage to these cars. Uh, we're only doing this at night to make sure that people aren't harmed or inconvenienced. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of those things where it's still very new and ambiguous. We asked a few people about this, mm -hmm. they, we kind of got a lot of uh, shoulder shrug emojis. <laughs> right. I think, you know, we are sort of in a new frontier of transit with some of these things. And I imagine laws are being written as we speak or tweaked at the very least. But 
Yeah, a very interesting technique. Here's one of my favorite things about you that our viewers should know but may not know. <laughs> you shoot all an ed you shoot your video yourself, you edit it yourself, but you also do some really crazy things to actually get the video. <laughs> for example, you cr climbed atop a ship uh, with no ropes for a story about bar pilots and shipping. That was fascinating, but for this, you also had to get a little creative, right, to get the video. Yeah, I actually called them right before the shoot to sort of get the logistics going, and I was gonna go with a car, and they're like, you're not gonna be able to do it because we go through all these areas where cars can't go. Mm -hmm. And then I figured I might as well do a bike, so I ended up taking <laughs> one of those e-bikes where you still have to pedal, but Cheating. a little bit less. <laughs> uh, these kids are really young and yeah. they're very fit and so it was really hard to follow them but uh, you know a lot of this video that you're seeing here ended up on the cutting room floor mainly because uh, you can hear me panting and huffing and puffing <laughs> throughout the entire thing but I mean I would be crying <laughs> so we give you a lot of credit Itai thank you so much for hanging out